What's going on folks, SAP dude here and now nah, in this video we won't talk about washing a car, we will talk about maintenance plan parameters. For this of course we are in Texas workshop and we will start this video with the business case which they have in this facility. So what I will do, I will just leave this place and go to the left side because there is a specific scenario of course. We are now in a paint room area. Okay, and here they have the following blue a compressor. And the idea from their side is to implement regular activities for this asset. Basically, every month they want to perform specific activities. For instance, replace an A filter, do some inspection of air compression and other things. So this is the first location where they have such a compressor but they have also the second one so we are just going to leave this one right now and see the a compressor in next location yeah so i'm just uh, just want to make sure i'm going the right way yeah it should be here and now to the right here we go now we are in car repair section yeah previously we were in paint room area let's say and now we are in different location, which is of course reflected in SAP system as a different functional location. This is something that we already discussed in other videos on this channel. And here we go. You see, we have the same model of the A compressor. Of course, this one is different. I mean, it's not like I took the, the one from paint room area and moved it here. No, we have just two A compressors, the same model, but in different locations. And Texas Workshop wants to perform regular maintenance of these two assets, yeah? And now I'm going to bring the requirements, basically the business case from Texas Workshop. So, first of all, we know we have two assets, two A compressors, yeah? That's the first thing. The second thing is that Texas Workshop wants to perform regular maintenance of these two A compressor on monthly basis basically every month they want to perform specific activities and these are first of all they want to change a filter and it should be done by mechanics the second thing is to perform visual inspection and this one will be also done by mechanics and the third one is to perform compression tests and actually this activity will be done by electricians so all these three activities should be done every month for these two A compressors. That's the first thing. The second thing is that this preventive maintenance program or yeah, approach should start on the 1st of February. By start, I mean that the first work order should, be, should have the planned date on 1st of Feb. Then one month later, so 1st of March should be the next work order and so on. Just to make sure, right now we are in January 2024. Okay, another thing is that they want to limit this plan to some specific deadline. It should be valid only two years. When it comes to work orders which will be generated in the system, okay, the planned date should be 1st of for instance, Feb, 1st of March, and so on. But the work orders should be already in the system about five days earlier. What does it mean? It means that as a supervisor, for instance, I can launch the system, the Fiori launch, but at the end of, for instance, yeah, January, and I will already see work order, which has the planned date on the 1st of uh, February. Yeah? This way I will have a better grasp on the work orders when it comes to this facility. Okay, and the last thing is that this maintenance plan should be also easy to find in the system. So that's like an additional requirement. All right, so that would be it. Now, before we go to SAP system, first of all, I will leave this location. And now we will jump quickly to some slides where I will briefly explain you how it works in SAP and then we switch to the system. Let's do it. I assume you know what preventive maintenance is, but anyway, I will bring the business process one more time to the table and discuss the main steps. First of all, let's start with the business roles. So we have a maintenance planner on the left side and we have also a technician. 
And actually the first step is on the maintenance planner level. Because they have to first of all identify the relevant assets. And that's actually something that we did. We went to two locations in Texas Workshop and found two A compressors and basically identify them as the relevant assets. The next step is to identify preventive maintenance tasks. And that's also something that we also know from the Texas Workshop company, yeah? Because they told us that they have three things to be done. First one is like uh, changing the filter. Second one is some inspection. The third one is to perform compression tests. So the maintenance tasks are also identified. And then we go to the third thing, which is to determine the maintenance frequency. And exactly, that's something that we also know already, because they want to perform this thing every month. They start from the, on the 1st of Feb, then 1st of March, and so on. And the next thing is also to be done on maintenance planner level, because they have to create this plan and schedule it. And this will be done, of course, in SAP system. We will go through it together. Then, once the plan is yeah, created and scheduled, we go to the second, let's say, level. We go to the technician. So then they see the work in the system and they can perform it physically and then document in the system. And that's actually the end of the story, let's say. Of course, we have some financial steps and so on, but we don't focus on them uh, basically right now. Before I jump to the system, let's take objects from SAP and match them to the following steps. In the first step, identify the relevant assets, we will use equipment or functional location. Then when it comes to the second step, uh, we have so-called, yeah, we have to identify preventive maintenance tasks and in SAP system there is something called task list. This is something that we will also create in this video. Then, frequency of maintenance. Here we can use maintenance strategies, but these are relevant only for maintenance plans which are strategy relevant. In this video, we will use so-called single cycle maintenance plan. So, have it in mind. When it comes to creation of the plan and scheduling, also we have the following objects. Maintenance item, of course, maintenance plan. Maintenance item is inside of this thing. Deadline monitoring. Then when it comes to technician and uh, the work which has to be performed, this will be done via so-called PM confirmations. Of course, for this, we need so-called work orders. All right, now it's time to jump to the system. We are in the system and I already jumped to the Fiori apps catalog. That's why I found here maintenance plan and we have many entries and here we have create maintenance plan. So this is like, a, let's say, Fiori app. We can select here, yeah, what kind of object we want to call when it comes to this maintenance plan, maintenance order, and so on. But actually, I will go to classic approach, to GUI, to transaction IP01. Why am I doing this with GUI? Because in this video, I want to focus on maintenance plan parameters, not on the process. And once I launch it, you will see what I'm talking about. So I'm going inside, I select the category maintenance order PM and I just click enter. Again, this one is single cycle time based maintenance plan. Have it in mind. It's not based on strategy. That's why I leave it empty. We are inside and we have many fields. And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to parameters. First of all, I went to the description, so it will be like monthly maintenance of a compressors. Then I will select the reference object. So remember we have two A compressors, so let's find them. These are reflected as equipment. So TX01 uh, equipment installed is activated. Let's execute it and let's go inside. The first one is located in the spray booth area or yeah, let's find it. Visual curve vehicles spray booth. Again, if you don't know this structure, I went through it. I, we created it basically together in functional location uh, related video. So make sure you follow this one as well. Then we find the a compressor, I click it, and here we go. The first one is entered, but of course we have to also find the second one. And we cannot do it in this uh, field, 
because we do it on so-called maintenance item level. So we create first item for this a compressor in, pay, in paint booth area, and then we will create another maintenance item for the second a compressor. But uh, we cannot leave it like this. Uh, we have to enter some other details. So it's from Texas. I will go through it really quick because that's not the intention of the video to discuss this planning data. We will focus on scheduling parameters in this video. That's why I select Y01 order type. It's phase based maintenance. Uh, if you don't know it, you can check the other video from my site as well. Then mechanic takes the one, I press enter. Uh, okay. And now we are moved to the psycho unit. So it will be like the first parameter. So what we have to do here, we have to come back to our requirements from the client from Texas Workshop, because here we enter the, yeah, the frequency of this maintenance plan. As you remember, they want to perform it every month. That's why I enter here M O N and one. So it doesn't mean that this plan is valid only one month. It means what is the frequency of this maintenance plan? Basically, the work will be generated every one month. All right, let's feel other things. Uh, okay, task list. I created already something offline, so now I, we will find it. Mm, for this one, it will be gener general task list. Let's go inside. And this one will be the first one month activities i created it offline but i will just display it quickly for you because you remember there were three tasks defined by texas workshop change a filter perform visual inspection and perform compression test the first two are done by mechanic the last one is to be done by electricians okay let's go back and now before we jump to scheduling parameters so actually the goal of this video Let's add second maintenance item because now we will add quickly the second a compressor. So I will fill out all these fields really quick. Spare parts repair area, a compressor, the second one. Here we go. We have two maintenance items. You see this counter over here. I can go to the first one. The second one is here. Once we save the maintenance plan, we will have maintenance item number here. But now, finally, we can switch to the maintenance plan scheduling parameters. So we discussed already the first one, the cycle unit. So now you should already be aware what is the intention of this field. If not, again, cycle is actually not a scheduling parameter, but it makes sense to start from it as it defines the interval at which the tasks should be performed. For single cycle plan, we set it up directly in the maintenance plan. For strategy based plans, we do it here yeah, via maintenance strategies. And in this example, we follow the single cycle time based maintenance plan. That's why we make it manually. And as you remember in Texas workshop, they want to do it every month. That's why we enter one and the unit mono which stands for month. All right, now it's time to switch to the second tab. And here we will start from so-called shift factors. You see, we have in total four fields for this. We have shift factor, late completion, tolerance for it, then early completion and tolerance for it as well. But what does it mean? What this parameter is yeah, responsible for? So. These parameters control what percentage of the late and early completion date is to be transferred to the next planned date. The values are always entered in percentage and in practice is either 0 or 100%. What does it mean? Let's take the Texas facility as an example. So the planned date of the first maintenance should take place on the 1st February 2024. And let's say that the actual completion of this maintenance took place on the 5th of Feb 2024. So four days, let's say, of delay. And once we set up the shift factor late completion to 100%, we will have the following effect. The next planned maintenance date, instead of 1st of March 2024, will be changed to 5th of March 2024 because the system will take the four days of difference of the delay, let's say, 
and move it to the next planned date of the next maintenance. Yeah? If we set the shift factor late completion to 0%, the effect will be quite different because there will be no change in the next planned maintenance date. It will be the 1st of March 2024. And the same logic applies to early completion. Moreover, you can also specify tolerances after what amount of days the shift should take place. For instance, if you want to apply the shift only when the difference of the planned date is about 8 days, you set it up in the tolerance. So once the difference is about 5 days, 6 days, there will be no change, no shift of the next planned date. The next parameter is so-called cycle modification factor. You can change the cycle times of a maintenance strategy by entering a value greater or less than one individually for each maintenance plan. In practice, you will just stick to one, but be aware of such option as well. Then we switch to factory calendar. This parameter is only relevant for scheduling indicator time factory calendar, which you see on the right side. For single cycle plans, it's derived automatically from the customizing. For strategy plans, it comes directly from strategy settings. And of course, here in single cycle plan, we can also change it. Let's take Texas facility again as an example. So the factory calendar here will be US. And what effect does it actually bring? Everything depends on the other parameters. In the next minutes, we will jump to parameter scheduling indicator and then you will understand what is the, let's say, touch point between these two parameters. Right now, let's skip it. And now we switch to call horizon parameter. We enter it either in percentage or number of days. It specifies when an order should be created in the system for a calculated maintenance date. In other words, how much time should pass between the current and future order before it's created in the system. By created, we mean just available in the system. The planned dates are something different. In practice, you will use three values. First one, zero percentage. What does it mean? It means that the next maintenance order will be immediately created once the previous one is decoded, so technically closed. Second value is 75%. What does it mean? It means that the next maintenance order will be created once 75% of cycle time elapsed. No worries, we will have a Texas example for it as well. Or we can set 100%. And the effect is as follows. The next maintenance order will be created exactly on the planned date. Now let's use the Texas facility example to have the better understanding. So you remember they had the following requirement that they want to automatically generate maintenance orders in the system. They should be there at least five days before maintenance day of each month. So what we already went through, we have the cycle of one month, so about 30 days. And the first planned date of an order, the first order basically will be on the 1st Feb 2024. And let's assume this order will be technically closed the, the same day on the 1st Feb 2024. And now if we set the call horizon to 0%, the effect is as follows. The next planned order with planned date 1st of March 2024 will be available in the system immediately on the 1st Feb 2024 because the call horizon is set to zero. If we set it to 75% and in other words it means it's 75% of, a, of one month, yeah? so around 23 days, the effect is as follows. The next planned order with plan date 1st of March 2024, of course, will be available in the system on 24 Feb 2024. Why? Because previously it was on the 1st Feb, yeah? But the call horizon was set to zero. And now we increase this date by adding 23 days of the 75% of the call horizon. That's how it works. So how is the situation with call horizon 100%? The effect is as follows. 
the next plant order with plant date 1st of March 2024 will be available in the system on the 1st March 2024 because the call horizon is set to 100%. Alright, I hope it's clear, let's switch to another parameter. Scheduling period. It specifies the actual length of time over which scheduling will take place. Once set, it builds a preview of your pending maintenance dates. Entering 5 years means your maintenance plan lasts 5 years and you will see all the planned dates in the preview. So again, we take the Texas facility example and remember, they said that they want to have the maintenance plan valid for 2 years. So actually, we should enter the scheduling period of 2 years. What effect does it bring? In the maintenance calls preview, you will see planned dates for the whole two years. But hold a sec, it doesn't mean you will generate maintenance orders for the whole two years. No, it's just a preview. You will see only dates, which can of course change, for example, because of late completion, etc. But you won't have the orders in the system for the whole two years. No worries. Yeah. All right, now it's time to switch to the parameter called completion requirement. It's just a checkbox and what I want to say here is that if you want the system to generate subsequent order only when the previous one has been technically completed, you activate it. And again, let's take Texas facility as an example. So the planned date of current order is 1st of February 2024, but the order has been finished and technically closed on 28th Feb 2024, so a bit late, right? And the completion requirement checkbox is activated. What effect does it bring? The next order will be created in the system, of course with planned date 1st March 2024, just on 28th of Feb 2024, not earlier, because the system waits till the previous order is technically closed. Okay, and now we switch to the parameter, which actually I should use as a starting point in the whole video. Scheduling indicator, because it's really important. It defines the planned dates of your maintenance plan. We have three options. Time, so it's fixed calculation, a month lasts always 30 days. The second one is time, factory calendar. It's like the previous one but only the factory calendar days are counted. And the last one, time key date, so effective days of a month. And to understand it better, again, Texas example. But before that, you remember one of the requirements. They said that the planned dates should be always the same day of each month. So 1st of February, then 1st of March, 1st of April, and so on. So the previous parameters are as follows. Again, cycle unit, one month, cycle start, 1st of Feb 2024, scheduling indicator, we will set it to time key date, because the effect is as follows. The planned date of the order will be 1st of March 2024, and the next one will be 1st of April 2024, and so on. If we set the scheduling indicator, to the time, so the first option, the effect is as follows. The planned date of the order will be 2nd of March 2024, because month is always considered as 30 days, and in February 2024 we have only 29 days in this month, that's why we have this shift. And then the next order will be on the 1st of April 2024, because we add 30 days to the March date, so the 2nd of March 2024. That's how it works. On the other hand, if we set the scheduling indicator to time factory calendar and the factory calendar will be US, the effect is following. The planned date of the order will be around 9th March 2024 because only the factory calendar days will be counted, so around 30 days of factory calendars, and it, everything depends of your country. Yeah? In, let's say, in January and Feb in uh, Germany, you will have, let's say, less working days than US. It may happen. I'm not sure right now, 
But yeah, so that's why the 30 days of factory calendar will move the next plan day to around 9th of March 2024. Yeah, so have it in mind. And in most of your implementation projects, you will stick to scheduling indicator, time, key, date. The last parameter is start of cycle. And you already know what it means because yeah, basically it's the date of the start. But in reality, we consider this as a date of the last performed maintenance for this asset or group of assets. This day will form basis for scheduling of your first preventive orders and the next ones. So again, Texas facility example, they mention in the requirements that this maintenance program should start on 1st of Feb 2024. So it means that the start of cycle actually should start on the 1st Jan 2024 because the effect is as follows. During scheduling, the first scheduled order will be with planned date 1st of February 2024. So that's how it works. And at the end, I will jump to the last step, maintenance plan additional data. So as it say, it's something additional, so it's not actually crucial. But you remember from the Texas workshop requirements, they said that they want to have this control over the maintenance plan. They want to find it easily in the system for scheduling, basically, yeah, to find it easily. And to do it, you can use so-called salt field. So what I did, because it's part of customization, I created sort field called month a comp, so monthly plans for a compressors. And once you select it over here, then in the next transactions, Fiori apps, you can use this field as a selection criteria of maintenance plans, which are, for instance, a compressors relevant. So have it in mind. And yeah, that was all for this video. It's vital to understand all the parameters when it comes to maintenance plans because that's the basis for preventive maintenance. In the future projects, you will be asked multiple times by your client about the possibilities and basically how to set up maintenance plan and the parameters to have the satisfactory results in scheduling. I hope you found many answers on your questions in this video. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to be up to date with next videos. If you want to have the full grasp, the full view on the preventive maintenance process, if you are new in SAP world or you want to boost your current SAP EEM knowledge, check out the description of this video. You will find a link to my ultimate course where I describe everything from scratch when it comes to preventive maintenance and other processes. In the course, we go through the business processes, configuration, user steps, basically everything. In the description of this video, you will also find a free graphic which I prepared for you when it comes to scheduling parameters. So yeah, feel free to use it. Thank you for watching this one and see you in the next video.